chapter 25. The resurrection of the dead. Of the book, God dictated to me that he titled Isaiah 53 in the day of the Lord. 50 chapters. This will be halfway. <laughs> There's just something going on with uh, YouTube. The uploading of these 30 minute videos, a 30 minute video can take four hours. Three hours to, process, uh, to upload and about an hour, sometimes much shorter for processing. Now God dictated this book to me. He dictated the Torah to Moses as the Orthodox Jews believe it in Judaism. What they don't know is that he also dictated all of the books of the prophets to each individual prophet. There's about 20 in the books of the prophets dictated or commanded and directed Isaiah what to write, particularly Isaiah 53 and Jeremiah, particularly chapter 31. Verse 31, sin forgiveness, the covenant of sin forgiveness. When the lands bloom again, the ruined cities restored, Jerusalem rebuilt. And all that was done um, or has been going on since 1948 when the state of Israel was created. So Isaiah had words, uh, God's words of sin forgiveness for the 13 tribes, all 13, who returned from exile. And as a holy seed, they rebuilt the second temple. There's a new covenant of sin forgiveness. It's just the same story over again. That's why he wrote that covenant. I'll write Torah on your hearts, and everyone shall heed me. For, because, I will forgive your sins and iniquities no more. And there's another temple to be built. And that covenant, the only other place you can find that covenant, there's also a covenant of friendship, but that basically comes with David and the covenant the sin forgiveness from Jeremiah comes with Elijah. Turns out Elijah and Moshiach are the same man, who is also the prophet like Moses, and the man described in Isaiah 53, and that would be me. Four, six unfulfilled prophecies remain in this, the day of the Lord. Four righteous men to come. The prophet like Moses, Elijah, Moshiach, and the man actually described in uh, Isaiah 53, the righteous servant. Oh, huh, there's six of them. And the other two are the covenants. Covenant of friendship, covenant of sin forgiveness. Both go into effect when this book gets published. God had me write it that way. Told me what to do. Command, directed, and dictated. The resurrection of the dead. The Rambam, Maimonides, compiled what he refers to as the Shalasha Asara Ikarim, the 13 fundable principles of the Jewish faith, as derived from the Torah. Maimonides, also called Rambam, I'm not sure I'm saying that properly, refers to these 13 principles of faith as the fundamental truths of our religion and its very foundations. Number 13 of the 13 fundamental principles is the belief in the resurrection of the dead. Ezekiel 1 and 10 are together a vision my sister a vision of the resurrection of the spirits of the dead to heaven 
The creatures later identified as cherubs, a type of angel, with the spirit in the wheel works, this is in verse 10, uh, verse 1, are going to and fro, east, west, north, and south, adding eyes to themselves and the wheels and taking them to the platform of heaven, God's house. In uh, Ezekiel 10, he says it's the same vision. At the entrance of the eastern gate of the house of the Lord, with the presence of the God of Israel above them, those eyes, they represent the spirits of the Jewish people who are deceased. That's a spiritual heaven, and that's what we believe today. Now, in antiquity, for whom the Hebrew uh, Bible, which is all God's and all God's Word, has a chapter 37 where you can find the resurrection of the dead with Ezekiel. Let's go to the Valley of Bones. Ezekiel say this, Rise, O bones, rise. And they come to life and meat and internals and skin and come flying out of nowhere and they become the people who died. Not today. Not in the modern era. You're not going to find as many movies as we have on the walking dead and zombies or the resurrected dead. Most people don't believe that anymore and science and medicine certainly does not support it. Period. And God's not going to do it. He never has done that, and he's never going to. Just like he won't change the minds of two billion Christians and two billion Muslims to disavow their respective gods and go and worship with the Jewish people saying, you've been right about God all along. But that's what would have to happen. If you expect most of you to go out and do that, you got another thing coming. This, nobody could do that. Never going to happen. They'll never be... That would, that's what would be required for world exaltation of the Jews. The Jews for Judaism teaches in saying Isaiah 53 describes all of the people of Israel gathered at one time as one man. Now, it's a spiritual heaven. Number 13 just needs to be changed. All of Israel, I'm assuming the other 12 were fine. <laughs> I don't know. I just know about the 13. I just know what you had me type. <laughs> God up here, up high to the left, about 10, 15 feet up by the ceiling. Holy Spirit down here at my level. Uh, that's the angel of God's presence. Wherever God's presence is, and it fills this room right now, an angel of his presence is going to be there too, whose body is the spirit of God. It's not human form with wings. All of Israel, whose name will endure into heaven, God is creating that are righteous and in right standing with God, are the eyes of the cherubs and in the wheels. The eyes represent the eyes of the spirits of the dead, a spiritual heaven. So say, this is all over the Hebrew Bible. And sometimes you can find it, not just one time in a book, but chapter to chapter. You really got to, and the rabbis need to learn this because it's where some of their false teachings are coming from. Not, not understanding that concept. And I just gave you the most Vivid one there is. One book, Ezekiel, and you have a description of a spiritual heaven, and you have a description of the resurrection of the dead. And it's in other places that I point that are pointed out in this book. Isaiah 65, 17 and 18 verses. For behold, I am creating a new heaven and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered. They shall never come to mind. Be glad, then, and rejoice forever in what I am creating. 
For I shall create Jerusalem as a joy and her people as a delight. Isaiah 66, verse 22. For as the new heaven and the new earth, which I will make, shall endure by my will, declares the Lord, so shall your seed and your name endure. That would be the name of Israel. It's a new heaven. When this world's done, the judgment day is here. The new heaven is just for Israel. All the spirits of the Jewish people that are not standing with God and righteous. It's a heaven just for them. There's no Gentile forgiven of sins. There's no recognition by God of a human sacrifice of any sort much less a son of his. If, if, a, if a Jew or a Muslim wants to see heaven, yeah, there's no 70 virgins either. <laughs> they have to convert to Judaism. Now how's that for a little switch, Spain? After the Inquisition, forcing Jews to become Christians under torture or death or being expelled. But we just said all that. Ezekiel 37 gives a vivid account. This is God, how God says what I just said. A vivid account of raising the dead to life into new bodies of flesh and bone. This was a common belief in the ancient age and middle ages. In the age of information with knowledge of science and the human body, medicine, few people believe that a human body can or will be resurrected anew by God. It is a primitive and medieval concept that was great for a time through the Middle Ages. That is why God provided visions of heaven conforming to the beliefs and world of the Jewish people in the Middle Ages and before, and a spiritual heaven for a more enlightened time of reasoning and knowledge. The burden on Israel and the practicalities of such event of millions of people suddenly appearing in the land from the time of Abraham, this would include the slaves in Egypt, and this is before God told them how to took their food, very primitive. It, uh, to today is unimaginable. You got six million people from the Holocaust of alone. There's only seven million Israeli Jews in Israel right now. He's doubled the population of the Jewish people with just six years or whatever, six years of the Holocaust. Many would be illiterate and savage and few would be trained to work in this society. All would have to be housed and fed, educated. It would be a prophecy that destroys the government and the state of Israel, the resurrection of the dead and the human body to a heavenly earth, Messianic earth, because it's supposed to happen when Moshiach comes. It's supposed to be a sign that Moshiach is here. Well, that's me. And there's no resurrection of the dead going on. And that's not something that's in the Bible. I'm sure it comes from Ramban. He's the one that came up with this. You have to have this belief. You know, people didn't understand. They would, God would tell them, don't sit in cemeteries. They'd lose a, lo a young one, use a loved one, usually at a young age. And they couldn't conceive of anything except I wish they'd come out of the ground and be alive. Wishful thinking. But they didn't have medicine and knowledge and science. Said to be a sign that Moshek has arrived or that it will, it will happen in his lifetime. This is a teaching from the ancient age and middle ages that continues today. 
Judaism, Judaism's reliance on everything the sages say in an era gone by in the oral tradition is important to the laws of the Torah. But the Talmud stories, opinions, and commentaries outside of that have to be viewed in light of this age of reasoning and knowledge. The day of the Lord and the arrival of God's servant David, that's what he calls Moshe, according to the prophets, must be interpreted with the evolution of humanity from the ancient age to the age of information. In mind, the errors in between and in the errors to come. These are God's words. Okay, that's it. Next, it's a short chapter. This next chapter is fairly long. We'll try to get it done. We'll be on 26 and more than halfway through. Reckoning and dismissal.